Okay. I'm good. I'm All right. We need to get that in a cup. Oh, gosh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's not us who's going to make it interesting. Oh, no, no. I didn't do anything. I need to run this back. I'm good. Remember, no videos, even with your phones. Pictures are okay. The only video is in the back. If you need to be patched in or a copy of it, your, our friends at Hammond will help you out. Okay? Welcome, Head Coach Hubert Davis and the student athletes from North Carolina. Closest to me, after Coach Davis, Justin McCoy, then Leaky Black, Dontrez Styles, RJ Davis, and our men, <laughs> I'm losing my mind here. Armando Baycott, coach will pass on an opening statement. We learned that this week. And we'll just move to the first question from the room on the left, third row. Armando and RJ, um, did you, your thoughts about overtime, it seemed like you guys had nothing left at the end of regulation and then somehow found what you did in overtime. What was it that got you through? Um, I didn't want to go home. <laughs> I mean, there was no time to be tired. Um, it was going to overtime. I knew it was at stake, and we all wanted to win. We wanted to get to the next round. So, you know, at that point, I wasn't even tired. I had a mindset of just, you know, Gather my teammates together and um, regrouping and tell them to contain our composure and let's get this win. Yeah, I mean, to build on what RJ said, I mean, none of us wanted to go home. We don't want to leave. I don't want to leave my brothers. And I mean, it was a tough last five minutes in overtime. And I mean, all year we've just been hearing about different things about us, how we're a soft team, how we don't like to fight. And I mean, today I think we really showed that we can fight and just to persevere in a moment like that and just come together. I mean, I'm just so proud and glad we won. Next question here in the room. We can stay on the left in the second row. Uh, this is for Justin and Dontrez. You guys hadn't really been in a position this season where you were asked to close out a game. What, how did you uh, go into the overtime? Like, what was your mentality in terms of what you needed to do to help get over the hump? Um, I would say just trust my work. You know, I put in a lot of work. Like, after practice, before practice, just really trusting that. I think Coach Davis was trusting me to go out there and perform. I would say also Coach Davis, I mean, he told us, uh, he told us in the huddle and he told us, I mean, I say a thousand times in practice that we're going to be in big moments and we need to be ready. And so he's, we've practiced that, we've drilled it. And so just being ready to step up, you know, having their support all season just in my ear, having me ready, I mean, it made it easy to step up. Okay. On the right, next to the last row. This question's for uh, Hubert Davis, Pat Walter, WRAL. Hubert, you talk all season about opportunity and how you never know when it's going to come, but it will come. <laughs> Has that ever felt more true than today? Well, today was a great example of that. It really was. And, you know, I always say that, you know, you will always get an opportunity with me. The thing that I can't guarantee is when, where, how, and the manner in which it'll come. The only thing that you are required to do is when that opportunity comes to be ready. And Justin and Dontrez were ready. And in a big time moment, big time situations, they, they stepped up on both ends of the floor. But again, the thing that brings me such great joy is the thing that I've desperately wanted for all of these guys the entire season is for them to have their own stories and testimonies and memories of playing in big time games and coming up big and in that Carolina uniform. And they just continue to have those stories and those memories and to see their smiles and how happy they are and um, the enjoyment they are having being together um, brings me great joy as a coach. Front row, far left. Uh, Coach Davis, Mac Eagle, Fort Worth Star Telegram. The game seemed to be interestingly officiated. Um, from where you were sitting, how did you feel that the way the game was called influenced the outcome and just to how the game was played in general? No, I thought, you know, we, you know both teams were very physical. Both teams um, attacked the basket through post-penetration. And 
none of us wanted to go home. <laughs> and so it's a highly competitive game. Baylor is defending champions. They were a number one seed and they are absolutely unbelievable. And you just had two teams that were fighting and scratching and kicking and clawing on every pass, every rebound, every cut, every shot, every free throw. And when that happens, um, at times physicality happens, but it was a very competitive game, physical game, and uh, two great teams played today. Right hand side, second row. Kramer, CBS 17. This is really for all of the players. Brady uh, has to go to the locker room with 10 minutes to go in the second half. What was kind of the message amongst yourself on the court and what was it like to kind of get back with him at the end of this game and see him in the locker room afterwards? Justin, you can start and then we'll work our way down. Um, you know, we really just wanted to do it for him. I mean, this is last year. I mean, I mean, the way I looked at it was, you know, I don't want it to be his last game. I want to see him out there again. And so I was like, let's go win this for him. Uh, yeah, pretty much what Justin said. You know, um, when, he, when he got ejected, we were just trying to regroup and just tell everybody to uh, keep their composure. You know, it was a lot of time left, but we knew we could do it, so. Uh, we just knew everybody had to step up. Come off the bench, you know, Bray's a hell of a player. He's one of our best players, one of the best players in the country, in my opinion. So we had to step up for him and do it for him. We yeah, all agree with the rest of the guys said. Um, when we got back into the locker room, we all gave him a big hel hug um, just to be happy for him. And, you know, we just wanted to do it for him and we got it done. Yeah, what they said. <laughs> <laughs> On the left, third row, fourth row. Coach, what did Baylor do down 25 that allowed them to get back in this game? Or maybe what did you guys do to yourself up 25 that allowed them to get back into this game? Well, you know, they um, consistently started to press us, and that bothered us. It did two things to us. One, it sped us up and made us make uncharacteristic plays. Uh, and the other thing, it, it, it made, made us turn the ball over. And we knew that, you know, Baylor is – so good defensively and one of the things defensively is big for them is taking care of the basketball and so up to the probably the 10 minute mark uh, we did a really good job of taking care of the basketball but I also felt at times in pressure situations we we lost our composure and so in certain situations I feel like we helped them but Baylor's a great team you know as I said before they're the defending national champions and they did not want to go home and uh, they stepped up their effort, and but we stepped up our effort as well. And we were able to make the plays that we needed to make um, um, in order to win the game. Okay. Right-hand side, second row. Armando, I was just wondering if you could speak to this, the level of anxiety out there. I mean, that's March Madness in full. Uh, you know, like what was the feeling like as, as they were coming back and you guys were trying to hold them off? Yeah, I mean, it was just crazy because, I mean, they're pressed. I mean, they was turning us over a lot, and then we weren't making free throws. So, I mean, it was a lot of pressure in those moments. But, I mean, it was just a next play mentality, and we just really had to dig in and just keep pushing and just keep a level head. And luckily, we came out with a win. Second row on the left. Armando, kind of piggybacking off of that, with the officiating, with the comeback, what does this rank as, you know, everybody has been saying how crazy this game was. What does this rank as, you know, on the level of crazy games that you participated in while you're here at Carolina? Oof, that's a good question. Uh, We've had some crazy games this year. I don't know. We didn't have some crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's top three, Louisville, Ed Duke, and then this one too. Top three. Clemson. Clemson was crazy, yep. Syracuse, Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> Louisville twice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Facts, facts. <laughs> I don't, yeah, it was, it's up there. It's stressful for sure. Wait until the end of the year and digest them all. Yes. They got your top five then. <laughs> Second row, Newey on the right. Uh, Newey Scruggs, NBC5 Dallas. Uh, RJ, question for you. What was said to, in, in the huddle as you go to overtime? This whole crowd here is basically a Baylor crowd. And how did you guys bring this one home? Because it just seemed like all the momentum had gone over there. Just to stay together, make plays, um, and not get too rattled. Uh, I think that's what you know we were able to do 
uh, in overtime. So it was more about staying together, uh, gathering the rebounds, and just making plays towards the end of the stretch. You know, Trez made a big three. Uh, Justin came in, made big rebounds and uh, free throws at the end. You know, Leaky, I could go down the line, but that was every day. Everyone came in, did the role, and we, you know, came out with the win today. Second row on the left. Question is for you, RJ. Um, Coming into this game, was there anything you saw on film or in the preparation for Baylor that that let you know you were going to have a big game or you would have the opportunity to have as big a scoring game as you had today? Well, I mean, I know they like to switch on ball screens. Uh, and I was able to get a rhythm first half, um, and that was uh, you know carried along throughout the whole game. I just took what the defense gave me, and I was able to make big time shots. Do one more in the room, then go to Zoom and come back here to Fort Worth. Front row on the right. For, for RJ, uh, at the end there, it looked like your left hand maybe got rolled over on that jump ball. Uh, uh, what happened, and how's it feeling? Uh, dove for a loose ball. Um, the guy rolled on my thumb. I'm fine, so I'm good. Okay. To the Zoom and uh, Mr. Rojas. And from the Daily Tar Heel, this is for Armando and Coach as well. So Armando, considering you were you had four fouls in the cheapiness with Sohan, how was it for you to still play your game down the stretch with the intensity of the game? Yeah, I mean, I just had to be smart and not pick up any silly offensive fouls, setting screens or sealing or doing anything like that. And also on the defensive end, too, I just had to try to keep my body away from their guards at the end. We switched a lot, so usually that's a chance. I mean, that's an opportunity where I get a lot of fouls. So just had to play smart and contain because, I mean, at that point, we didn't have Brady or Caleb. and. We needed as many bodies that play a lot in the game as possible. So, yeah, I'm just glad I got out there without getting a fifth foul. All right, and Patrick. Hey, how you doing? This is uh, Patrick Waring from the MBS Sports Hour. Had a question for RJ. RJ, during the game, um, your dad actually got a mention during the game. We talked about uh, what he did at Mercy, his career. Uh, just wanted to ask you, I guess, two questions. Um, just could you kind of talk about what he did to help you uh, coming up? And do you have any stories you want to share? Any any intense one-on-one -on -one games, anything like that? Um, I mean, shout out to my dad. Um, he was a big time scorer in college. Uh, they call him the Rocket. Uh, I would say he was more of like a, you know, he liked to hunt his shots more than me. I think I'm an all-around point guard. True point guard at that. Um, you know, he just always stayed on me, uh, even when I had good games or bad games. It was always good uh, criticism just to get me to this position where I'm at now. And I, you know, give credit to him uh, just for you know everything he's done for me. Um, you know, from workouts to you know AU, uh, him spazzing on me in the car rides. <laughs> so uh, you know, shout out to Big Rob. Okay, got time for a couple more <laughs> on the left. Next last row. Hubert, RJ yesterday, 12 assists, but couldn't really find the basket himself. Today, career high 30 points. Just what did, what did you see out of him? And did you say anything to him once Caleb came out with, with five fouls? Well, the, the first game against Marquette, he could find the basket. He just threw the ball to the people close to the basket. There's, other, there's many different ways to find the basket, and that's why RJ is one of the better guards in the country. Um, his ability to understand when to pass and when to shoot has been absolutely fantastic. Um, he runs our team, he gets the ball to, our, um, to his teammates at the right moment and at the right time where they can do something with it on the offensive end. Does an excellent job of taking care of the basketball and he's a big time shot maker. You know, his ability to be able to, not only from three, but also, you know, that drive in overtime to be able to be able to finish in the lane those are things that RJ has done consistently throughout the entire season. So, you know, I know he, he was able to do that on the biggest stage today, but that's something that RJ has done consistently throughout the season. Okay. Time for one more. Let's go right here on the left. It's for Leakey and RJ. You guys had a lot of trouble there for a while getting the ball in bounds and getting it up the court, but you had a little bit more success in the overtime. What was working a little bit different for you? Uh, yeah, pretty much when overtime started, you know, we were just trying to get our guys to realize that it was 0-0, you know, new game, just got to relax and we just got to step up, you know, regardless. So that's just pretty much it. Yeah, what Leaky said. No, I'll add on to that. Um, 
Yeah. I would say, uh, you know, the press, you know, gave us a little bit of trouble. Uh, it was just more about having different outlets uh, to get the ball in. You know, I think Justin, uh, Mondo, Trez did a good job of creating space to get open, and that, you know, was able to uh, get down and get easy baskets, baskets on the offensive end. We've exhausted our time with the Tar Heels, guys. Thanks very much. Congratulations. Appreciate it.